Hey guys, Spray and Pray here, and welcome to Victoria 2. We're going to be starting off a new series today, guys, where we're going to be looking at Victoria 2 and how you guys can play Victoria 2 a little bit better. So I got a comment on one of my videos for Victoria 2 asking for some videos where we, I'll explain some of the more advanced and some of the basic ideas around Victoria 2 and how to play it so that you can be a little bit better at it. Now, I think this is a great idea, and we're going to start making videos for it, and it'll probably be a little bit of a series. I'm going to do short topics, so short ideas for every video, but I'm going to make a lot of them, so eventually this playlist that I'm going to make will have all the videos in it, and basically if you just watch this whole playlist, you'll be a Victoria 2 expert by the time you're done with it. So to start off, I thought it would be great if I showed you guys how to actually start off the game, and we'll go through everything that you need to set up before you actually hit the play button, before you tell the game to advance in time. So let's go ahead and start with the United States of America. The reason why I'm choosing the United States of America is because it's a great nation to start out with as a beginner. Reasoning why is because first of all you're the United States of America so you're not really you know involved in the affairs of Europe. Victoria 2 while the whole entire world is in play the game mostly focuses on the Europe and this is where all the great powers are usually France the United Kingdom, Austria, Prussia, Russia, those guys like to fight a lot. And it's kind of, you know, if you're in the thick of it, if you're Germany or Austria, Prussia, France, you know, you're going to be very busy, a lot of things to handle. And that's why the United States of America is a really great place to start out, because they're, they're away from all that. They're removed. The only things that you have to worry about are keeping up relations with the UK, which is pretty easily done. You just want to, you know, make them happy with you all the time. And colonizing, it's the United States is just a great starter nation because they're shielded from all the conflict and turmoil in Europe and they get to just be kings of the North American continent. You have Mexico here, who is a formidable opponent if you don't know what you're doing, and you have the British to the north, which could get angry at you quickly and that's why you want to make sure that you're keeping up relations with them. Anyways, let's get started here. So we've selected our nation and we're going to want to hit play. Now I'm playing with the Pops Demand mod enabled, which is a mod that you can get in the description of all my Victoria 2 videos where I play it. And it's a, it's a nice mod, it changes a few things like the borders for Texas and stuff like that, but most of it's all the same and so it's going to make sense. And we're playing with the mod, uh, sorry, we're in the expansion Heart of Darkness. So if that makes any difference to you guys, the old, it's going to be slightly different from if you're still playing a House Divided. And it's going to be vastly different if you're using vanilla Victoria 2 because House Divided revamped the entire UI. So I wouldn't really bother watching this unless you're using at least a House Divided. Alright, so to start out, you might be a little bit overwhelmed. The screens are quite, you know, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of little numbers and things here that you got to keep track of. And I think it'll be best if we start off in the bottom here. Um, so yeah, where my face is right now, is, underneath that is just the map. And the map has a bunch of various modes which tell you a lot of different things about stuff and things. They can be very useful, but most of the time you're just going to want to, as soon as you hit in the game, you're going to want to hit W and change it to this map mode, which is the political map mode. It's usually what I like to stay on and what most people stay on. Sometimes it can be uh, helpful if you want to just hit the A key and it'll take you to the RGO map mode, which RGO is basically what each region produces. That, that could be helpful if you wanted to see that. Mostly though, just hit W and you'll be good. So you start off the game, you have you have these bars at the top. This is this is your main area you're going to be working with. Over here and here is the status stuff, but you're going to be working with these buttons up here mostly. So first off over here in production, not really much you got to do at the beginning. This is pretty much already taken care of for like 99% of the countries. As you can see, we have a project here, building a railroad in New York. That's a good idea, so we might as well invest in that first thing. We'll go ahead and do that. Holding shift and clicking will invest the maximum amount you can in this. And then you don't have to do any other menus. So second is our budget. This can be very hard for some countries. You have to actually balance the budget. So basically what you want is a green number here. So what I usually do is I raise tariffs up to 10%. So 10%. So while simultaneously having a green number here, you really, really want to have all these bars maxed out. So we can only raise military spending up to here. Administration, we're going to want to max out, and education. You're going to want to try to do this as much as you can. And the way that you're going to be able to make this better is by taxing your people more. Now normally the poor people are a really good place to tax. You don't really want to tax your rich people, and I know it's weird and horrible, 
but you want to actually put your rich people tax as low as possible. Reason being, in Victoria 2, I'm not saying real life, you know, this is kind of weird, and I would definitely not want this tax structure in real life, but in Victoria 2, the rich are responsible for making factories, so if you tax them less, they're going to build more factories. So it's really, it's better to not have the rich people tax as much. Now, then, the middle class is kind of, you know, obviously, it's a little bit obvious, you know, you want to have them taxed in the middle. So what I like to do is try to, I try to give them as much of a break as I can, and it looks like we can actually give them. Honestly, if this, you want to be making at least a hundred pounds a day, especially as the United States, because the United States is really, you know, you should be making at least a hundred pounds a day. That's, that's pretty much normal. So you can adjust your tar your taxes based on that. But you just always want to be making money. You never want to be losing money for a very long time. Unless you're at war, then it's okay. But you want to be making money as much as possible. And you want to have these slidey bars all maxed out. So what I usually do, 10% tariffs, max out the slidey bars, max the taxes on the poor, and then you're good to go. So you just hit the X and you're good. Now you're done with your budget tab. Now to on to technology. Technology is really up to personal choice. However, depending on what nation you start out as, as the United States, we're already a great power, so we don't really have to worry about that. Getting into great power status, which is normally the goal if you're a secondary power or something like that. But if I was the United States and I was playing, I would probably just, you know, go ahead and read all the text that you can do. I know it's taking a while, but, you know, the game is on pause. You have forever to read it, so you might as well get a look at what you're going to be able to research and what you might want to research first. Now, I would think that as the United States, you probably would go with either one of these uh, iron muzzle-loaded artillery to get your units ready to fight with Mexico soon, or you wanted to beef, beef up your industry and go with clean coal. For this, we're going to just go with clean coal and starting research on that. Now, we're done with the technology tab. The second, the third or fourth tab that you got over here is the politics tab. You're going to want to open that up. As you can see, we're 100% conservative. You're not going to stay that way very long because your people and your voters are actually not 100% conservative for sure. So you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to want it. This is the most important, one of the most important buttons right here, the, this green little check mark. If you click it, it'll take you right to the decision screen. And if you have any decisions that you want to do, that you can do right away, you're definitely going to want to do them. Pops Demand Mod adds a few, so you're not going to actually have to worry about those. But, you know, if, for instance, Land of Opportunity, that's a great one to do. So go ahead and do that right away. We're not even going to, you know, start the game without having that. The United States gets the rights of man. That's also a really good thing to do. And I think that's added only in the pop. So if you're playing just, you know, Heart of Darkness with no mods, then it's just probably going to be just the first one. Anyway, so that's pretty much all you need to do in the politics tab. Now, moving on to the population tab. This is where you have to actually do a little bit of thinking. Now, in the population tab, as you can see here, I have zero out of two focuses set. National focuses are really cool. They can actually steer your country into doing whatever the heck you want it to do. So for instance, I like to start out the game encouraging either capitalists, clergymen, or I think it's, uh, yeah, it's capitalists and clergymen that you want to start encouraging as soon as the game starts because they have a direct effect on your amount of research points that you have. And if you just hover over the little magnifying glass numbers here, you'll actually pop up a menu here that shows you what exactly you want to get. So as you can see, bureaucrats get you 1% is optimal, and it gives you more research points to have that 1%. Clergyman, on the other hand, 2% is optimal, and they give you research points. So you want to make sure that 2% of your population is clergymen. And to do that, you just encourage clergymen. So usually I just encourage clergymen in my two most populous areas, and then I move it on down the line until we get around 2%. It's not that big a deal, and you can always check right here. You just want to get as close to it as possible. National focuses, eh, they, they, they do help, but they're not really super effective. So if you mess up or put them wrong or forget about them, it's not really that big of a deal. The next trade here, or tab here, is trade, and there's nothing really you have to do on here. I, I've i never really messed with this window too much, so I think, you know, just leaving it is fine. The diplomacy screen is a big screen. So as the United States, of course, I told you, it's very important to keep up relations with the United Kingdom. So increasing relations between your countries, first off, is really important. So I would start out with that. You only have a limited amount of points, so be careful. Now, the other place it might be a good idea, you might want to maybe increase relations with Texas because you're soon going to be helping them in a war, which is shown here. We have the Texas War for Independence. You're going to want to join on this side. 
So as soon as they start to lose, you're going to want to join on the side of Texas because Texas will love you and therefore become a state later on. And if you intervene, then you can get these cores for Texas. Because as you can see, Texas is just a little bit of a shriveled little potato shape here. When they actually have land, they have cores on all this land over here. So getting these two back is going to be really important for you to have a super awesome Texas as the United States. But that's just the United States. Now, especially for the United States, you have also have these colony things. You're going to want to first create a colony here in Walla Walla. I wouldn't fight over Colombia because the UK is going to go for Colombia right away. You're going to want to click on Walla Walla first because that will block the UK from actually coming into the United States, most likely. They usually won't challenge you over that. Um, if they do, just go for Oregon. Hold them off in Walla Walla, but go for Oregon then so that they stop. Uh, if you lose it, it's not that big a deal because eventually, of course, you'll be able to fight the UK. Everybody can. But anyways, you're going to want to start colonizing there. And you have some points left over, so you might want to colonize here, 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 and here. But it just depends on what the UK does right away. So, I mean, the, it's not too important to beat Mexico. That's the thing. If Mexico takes one of these or two of these or something like that, it's not the end of the world because you're going to get Manifest Destiny, which will give you the cores on all these lands, and you'll be able to just steal them from... Mexico anyways. So for right now, just worry about fending off the British from up here. And if you can do that, great. If not, go for Oregon, then you'll be alright. So we can just go ahead and we'll make colonies in all these areas here. Because we have plenty of power points to do that. You're going to want to upgrade your navy bases if you can. Those are the things that give you colonial power. We'll talk about that in a separate episode though. For right now, we're just setting up our starting operations as the United States. So we finally arrive at the last screen here, military. And what are we going to do? We're going to build some more troops because we can. You're going to want to build regulars. Don't build irregulars unless you're uncivilized or you can't do anything else. But infantry is always better, actually. So you probably will never build irregulars. So I would say just 13 more irregulars would work. And then 4 more artillery. And then maybe some... I like crossiers. Or no, hussars. Hussars are really good at attack. I'm pretty sure. No, sorry. It's crossiers. Crossiers are slow, but they have really amazing attack and defense, so it's better. I, I prefer them because, you know, I don't really mind them being slow. I'd rather have a slow and powerful army than a, than a fast, weak army. You can also build some navy, but at the beginning, the United States is actually a little bit, you know, the economy is a little bit underdeveloped, so you can't really support the ships that you have right now, so a good idea would be to disband these ships, but it's really up to you. You can leave them and you can support them, but it's just whatever you want. Alright guys, so that's pretty much everything you would need to do as the United States of America to start off the game and, you know, to hit the unpause button and get going. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to cover in future videos, for instance, colonization and stuff like that, because, you know, colonizing Africa and everything is the, that's such a huge part of the game that I, I it's going to take an entire episode for me to describe and tell you all the cool tricks and stuff to do. And I hope you'll join me then. I think that's what we're going to do next, probably colonization. And I'll see you guys there. Thanks so much for watching. Spray and pray out.